speak Chinese. Hello everyone and welcome to ICSA 2021. My name is Leonard and joining me today here in Singapore is Chef Louis Barker of Sommer Restaurant. Hello Chef. Hello, good morning. Before we go any further, I just wanted to acknowledge that you know we have some friends over in Taiwan. So over to you Tracy. Hi. 早安大家好欢迎来到我们二零二一亚洲主厨高峰会的一个台北会场哦那我是主持人崔西那在我的左手边呢是我们的<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> okay, so uh, before we start cooking, I think all of you have your boxes ready in front of you, but we're going to have a little chat with Chef Louis. So Chef, um, you basically open your restaurant Willow's, um, uh, sorry, a summer sometime this year. Uh, how was that experience for you? It was good. It was a new experience, but um, of course it was a busy time. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess when we opened, it felt like most of the pandemic had kind of been stabilized and, and we were moving forward. But shortly after that, we learned that we weren't. So we went through a, a couple of lockdowns in between. Yeah. And then after that, you know, we got we got moving and uh, and definitely more stabilized and and and, and yeah, I mean. And it was congratulations great. on the star as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> So yeah. okay, can, maybe for those of uh, the guests who have not been to Soma before, or haven't had the chance to visit, maybe you can describe sort of the food that you cook at Soma. So I mean, we are a contemporary modern European restaurant, um, okay. but we do like to influence some Japanese ingredients in there, but we cook them in a Western way. Okay. So we source most of our fish from Japan and, and quite a lot of vegetables as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're a relaxed approach to um, fine dining, basically. Yeah. I see. Okay, so how long have you actually been in Singapore? I'm um, coming up to six years now. Okay, so I'm going to ask six you a bit more of a fun question. What is your local favorite local dish to eat? Favorite local dish has to be the classic call me cheesy, but it's chicken rice. Chicken rice. Yeah. Okay, so let's get Taiwan up If you are out there and you visit Singapore, you have to have chicken rice over here in Singapore because it's one of our classic national dishes, I'd say. And what, what would a typical like uh, staff meal for you look like? Staff meal changes every day, so we try to um, switch around a little bit. So of course, most of the week it's Asian, but I do need my Western fix every now and again. So okay. Saturday is the last day of the week. So typically we would have, you know, like noodles or uh, pasta. Okay. So every day is just a little bit different. It is a little bit different, yeah. Okay. Variety is the name of the game. That's it. Awesome. All right, Tracy, over to you in Taiwan. Hi, yes. 嗨大家早安那我们当然呢也希望我们透过一个一个这样的一个场场合呢能够让我们更了解我们的主厨还有他新开的餐厅哦他的餐厅在二零二零年的五月才就正式的做开幕那当时呢也遇到疫情的关系
开幕的计划做了一个展延。但是呢，在这个现在一个阶段，整个一个大环境都比较稳定的状况下面呢，它就已经比较正式的营运的发发展的状态当中。那比较特别的是呢，因为当时呢，在大家都可以记忆中，在八月开始的话呢，其实所有的餐厅要都是提供一个套餐的一个形式，所以它本来是希望一个比较单点轻松的形式来跟大嗯、呃、台湾的一个民众做分享。但是因为我们在疫情的情况下，现在的餐厅就是提供一个主要是一个套套菜单套餐式的一个菜单这样子。好，那当然呢，比较特别的一个情情况下，大家可能会想说，哎、欸，这样的一个餐厅是提供什么样的一个菜色？那主要主题是一个比较现代的一个澳洲的一个餐饮的一个形式的发展。但是其实稍后我们可以让师傅来了解更多关于澳洲的一个特色跟菜色。但是我们可以来看一下，到底什么样的一个澳洲菜会在 Canvas 里面做呈现。So chef。Mm. So we talk about the modern Australian cuisine. Yes. So personally, I'm just curious, what kind of the food will be signature dish for Australia? Because like in Japan, you will think about the sushi. Yeah. Then maybe for Taiwan, you will talk about stinky tofu. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So maybe about the、uh, England, maybe the fish and chips. Right. 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 So、yeah. what is the the kind of the dish for Australia? Sure. So、uh, it's hard to put an exact definition. On、uh, Australian cuisine, in a sense, because、uh, Australia is really just like a melting pot of cultures.、Mm-hmm. There's a lot of、uh, a long history of immigrants coming to Australia, all over from Asia, Europe,、uh, some even from like North Africa and the Arab nations as well.、Uh, so we to say that there's like a signature dish、uh, is is, is Quite tricky. Like I think for a lot of people, when they think about signature dishes in Australia, it might be like salt and pepper squid, but、mm-hmm. that's like very Chinese.、Uh-huh. Or or we have our interpretation of fish and chips, but、yeah. again, like you said, it's it's British, right? Yeah, so、British. so I think it's or another one that would I guess for me growing up in the countryside, like is just called meat and three veg, which、mm-hmm. is basically just like roasted meat and three different vegetables. It's not really a signature dish,、mm-hmm. but that's like what we grew up with having as like as kids at home. So I think、um, to say it's like a, a signature dish is quite difficult. But to say, but I think that Australians have particular values when we're cooking and、uh, and eating.、Um, it's always fresh.、Um, it's always from. It's it's usually very local because、mm-hmm. it is a big space、uh, with the same population or similar population to Taiwan. Yeah, but. It's like 150 times the size,、yes. right? So, so it's very spread out. There's a lot of open spaces, so it's very difficult to get ingredients from all around Australia. You kind of have to work with what you have、mm-hmm. nearby. So, I think it's always very fresh. Always using like ingredients that are sort of close to us, and then by doing it that way and keeping it quite simple, I guess that's sort of our values when we're cooking. Australian food. Okay, no problem. <笑>好，那这边呢，跟各位观众做一个分享哦。师师傅特别提到，就像我刚刚特别问的，什么是澳洲的一个食物哦？就像说，对一个日本来说，寿司是一个比较经典的一个食物。那对于台湾呢，是我们的臭豆腐。每个呃，所谓的观光客来到台湾都要品尝的臭豆腐。那对于澳洲来讲，是什么样的一个？呃呃，所谓的佳肴呢，会是属于澳洲的一个美味的代表、哦。那这边主厨特别提到说，其实大家可以看到说，澳洲是一个移民大熔炉的一个国家，所以无论是南非，无论是我们的欧洲、亚洲，有很多的移民的一个观民众呢，会来到我们澳洲。所以其实呢，澳洲本身的一个文化就是一个比较多元融合的一个文化。他有提到，可能大家到澳洲可能会吃到什么椒盐的鱿鱼啦，或者会吃到一些所谓的英国的一个炸鱼薯条。但是其实都是因为移民外来的关系而造就了不同的一个文化，在这个土地里面的一个融合跟成长。但是呢，对他自己来讲，他从小在一个乡村的一个区域里面长大的，所以对他来讲，他吃到的是比较多的一个肉类的食物跟新鲜的蔬菜。所以总而言之，他觉得在澳洲里面的一个所谓佳肴的一个特色，就是在地新鲜，然后最重要的是就是能够带给大家比较开心啊，然后幸福的一个感觉。So, okay, Lennon. So how about the chef? I think the chef Louis. So what do you think about the food in Australia? First time I saw. Pretty much like、um, from the land or the farm to the table cooking, so you can get 
lots of different uh, various different ingredients from across the whole of in Australia that are quite indigenous to that to that place like some restaurants I saw even a restaurant I was working in at the time you know they, they spent a lot of their time foraging from the land so you know salt bush beach mustard all these kind of different herbs and uh, varieties of like fresh eucalyptus from the tree from the local park that was quite eye-opening for me you know like so I saw Australian cuisine as, as definitely something new I'd only ever seen a kangaroo, kangaroo on a TV, not on a plate. And that was the first time I actually, uh, yeah, I was open my eyes to that kind of cooking. And I think that was also the first time that you met Chef Kai, right? That's right, yeah. Okay. 好，那我们这边特别提到，刚刚也透过一个镜头，我们就是双城的这边也问了 Chef Louis 说，那他认为的一个澳洲的料理又是什么样的一个形式呢？所以他特别提到，就说他其实跟我们的 Chef Kai 一起在我们所谓在澳洲里面非常知名的一个 Key Restaurant 一起工作，所以他们主要的一个就是所谓的一个餐厅的精神，就是从。就是所以从那嗯产地到餐桌的一个概念，所以在澳洲里面呢，所有的食材都是非常新鲜的，而且是在短距离里面去运送的，所以只要在餐厅里面所有的一个食材都可以确保我们消费者使用到的都是一个在地的食材，而且是新鲜的一个方式去做呈现跟烹调的。好 ，so 嗯、um, ，how so then we talk about the key restaurants， 嗯、mm. ，so。Uh, what's your experience working with the chef Peter Gilmo? I'm so curious. I met him, I think, in 2015 in Taiwan. Right, right. So yeah, he's so cute and <laughs> so kind. So really, like he's yeah, so he kind is, in the is. kitchen he's as well. A, Let's just a little bit gossip. He's a, no, no, no. Uh, I, I, I think one of the the great things about Peter Gilmo is kind of what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. uh, he's he's just a big jolly guy. Yeah. Um, he's very happy. He's a lovely person. Um, and and I think especially when you when kitchens have the appearance of being like you know it's very like tough and like yeah. you know people can get angry and crazy or whatever. Yeah. But but Peter Gilmore is very he's the exact opposite of that. He mm -hmm. and he he doesn't actually allow that in his kitchens. Yeah. It's a very polite. It's a very a um, it's a very calm place. Uh, it's busy, of course, mm -hmm. uh, but. People are working together. We are, you know, we say hello and goodbye at the end of the day, and that's and that's kind of enforced in the restaurant. And and uh, it's a very he's a very friendly person, and 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 not just and, and a very generous person too. Mm. Not just with his cooking, but also the way he is as a person. So, okay. Yeah. OK， 好，那这边呢，就是刚好就是崔姐这边在2015年呢，我们在台北的一个场地有机会遇到，就是他的师傅，他的一个厨艺的老师，就是 Peter Gilmo， 就是我们 Key Restaurant 的一个主理人哦。那所以我这边就稍稍的，就是就是想要了解一下说，说主厨是不是就如同他在餐厅呈现的样子，是这么的可爱，然后文质彬彬，然后很有礼貌。那也确实呢，在这样的一个餐厅里面，主厨也都是希望大家能够在一个快乐氛围的一个环境下一起共事跟共。工作，所以他也希望大家能够开心的进来，开心的一个离开。所以无论早晨的打早安啊，或者是离开的时候，大家说个再见，其实都是一个非常良好的一个互动。也就如同我消费者在外面看到了一样，就是这么样的如实的一个朴实的一个主厨。So how about the chef Louis? Your experience working with the Peter Gilmore? Peter Gilmore. My experience working with Peter Gilmore. Well. I was actually quite young at the time, so I was 21 years old and I was a commie chef. So I arrived there and it was this restaurant and I did a trial and uh, I managed to get a job. And for me, it was uh, quite inspirational because Key was a restaurant, what I'd always read in a book. You know, I always bought, as a young chef, I was the first one, you know, one of the guys to buy the Key book and being inspired by all these meticulous dishes and, and, and little fiddly, like what looked to be fiddly, uh, bits to make and, and when I went there I was you know I was inspired by not only how busy it was but how precise and, and, and that they could be to get that volume of, of um, you know customers out from the kitchen into the dining room every day consistently. Was that your like first time going to like a fine dining kitchen? It wasn't my first time in a fine dining kitchen but it was definitely my first time in a fine dining kitchen on that scale. Right of, to do uh, what like a hundred covers yeah you do service. you do 100 plus covers every service yeah that's crazy i mean for those of you who don't know like a fine dining restaurant typically would do between 25 to 30 uh at maximum so to do 100 plus 
uh, and maintaining the incredible quality that he has maintained is uh, a really incredible feat. Um, should we actually start looking at our ingredients? I think some of our diners at home must be wondering how to put our dishes together. So chef, maybe you can introduce what we have in the box. Sure. All right. I'll do it this way. So in our box, we've got a steamed ginger custard. And then we have so our squid. Custard. So the squid looks very interesting. Maybe you can tell us a bit more about this. It looks very thinly sliced. Sure thing. So it's, it's a technique that we used to use at Key. So basically it was, uh, we open up the squid and we take off the membrane from both sides and get that really nice and clean. And then we layer the squid up, freeze it down. So it's, so it's like almost like a terrine. And then we slice that on the meat slicer. Really I nice see. and thin. So that's that component. Then we got the ingawa. So quite an interesting component. So it's typically the, the outer part of a flatfish. So we take ours from Dover Sole, and um, what we do is lightly brine it, and then we very lightly smoke it for one minute. So we do ours over a Japanese hay straw. I see. So that brings quite a nice smoky part to the dish. And then you'll so, have- So it's smoked, but it's actually still raw? Technically, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it gets a little bit of cure just from, from, the, from the brine. And then we've got a packet of our squid consomme. Mm -hmm. So we make this consomme by roasting down all the trims from the squid. And then um, we get a really nice and golden. We pour over brown chicken stock and we infuse a little bit of uh, shallots and a little bit of chili on the back note. So it's not hot, but it just brings a little bit of warmth to the dish as well. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have our selection of herbs. So we're going to garnish with this last. Awesome. So, Chef, so uh, how are we going to put this together for those uh, at home watching sure. once you dig in? So what you want to do is, um, if you've got a microwave at home, um, probably 10 to 20 seconds, not too long, because if you go too long, the custom, the egg will explode. So we just want to very light, light, lightly uh, heat that. If you don't have a microwave, you can uh, leave it next to your warm stove for around 10 minutes. Okay. But we're going to do ours in the steamer for a few okay. minutes. So. Should we pop that in? Yeah. Uh, Let's do you that. can just transfer this to your tray. Yeah, sure. And we this. With the lid on? With the lid on, yeah. We don't okay. want to get any water inside to dilute. Okay. Just for a couple of minutes, two minutes? Yeah, one or two minutes in the okay. steamer, yeah. After that, we've got our squid consomme. So we want to get this a little bit warmed. Mm -hmm. So let's just open this one up. And then again, you don't want to boil this one too much because we've already reduced that down to a good consistency for right. you already. So if you reduce that anymore, it'll intensify too much. It so it's just, too to, it's just to make the, the sauce hot. Basically. Correct. Yeah. So we just want to warm that. And also okay. if we put it on too hot, we're going to overcook the custard as well. I see. So what, what was kind of like the inspiration for this dish that you, you know, sort of created with Chef Kai? So it's based around the techniques that we basically used to use at Key. So yeah. it's a very similar dish as what you maybe would find at Key. So yeah. that we always did like a nice steamed egg component, almost mm -hmm. like a chow mushy star. Mm -hmm. And then shaved squid was also quite a common component yeah. on some of our yeah. dishes. So. so the squid is more to act as like a noodle almost? Correct, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Similar to a noodle. Very interesting. So you have a carp free noodle over go. in your box. <laughs> and a consomme. So we did quite a various different amounts of different consomme at key. So we mm -hmm. decided to, to put them kind of three elements together again, mm -hmm. um, but simplify it a little bit. So I it's see. a bit unfriendly. I see, I see. Awesome. And is this something that maybe you could, you would find in your restaurant or you would serve in your restaurant? Um, not necessarily, but I do enjoy, you know, like a good steamed custard as well. And, yeah. and, and I definitely have used the squid consomme before. I see. So yeah, it's definitely flavors that I enjoy to use in the restaurant and also eat. And what about the angawa? Like, um, you know, the angawa is, I think, probably one of the fattiest parts of the fish. It's got really nice collagen, gelatin. Uh, it's very rich as well. It is. So uh, we like to use it because it reminds me a little bit of like almost uh, a fish larder. I see. So Ooh, that's a good way to put it, actually. Yeah. yeah. Fish larder without the intense saltiness. And once you smoke it as well, it also adds a real nice note to it, to whatever you're cooking with. So I think the custard has been steaming for just over a minute. That's it. So we got that right there. A little bit warm. So we can leave that near our stove. The heat from the stove will keep that warm as well. Right. So we got the ingawa here. 
We're also going to take the squid up from the bag. I think I'm going to transfer it back to okay. Okay. So I think uh, we've done half of the recipe. I'm going to pass it back to Tracy so that you guys can complete the dish over in Taiwan. Yes, thank you, Lennon. 所以我們現在呢,回到台灣這邊呢,我們的主廚呢,要幫我們的一個主食材,我們的花枝還有比目魚來做一個烹調,那我們一起來看一下主廚怎麼樣去做呈現。So please chef, we start with the cooking. Yes, so like Lewis, I've sort of heated up the custard. So uh, I just microwave mine, it took about 20 seconds. Um, I think that's more than enough and consomme is just coming onto the heat as well. Mine's you don't want to boil it, you just want to bring it up to it's just before simmering, I would say. So just trying to get it like 80 to 90 degrees is, is good. Um, 好,那這邊呢,我們就是要開始在左手去做一些準備,在這之前呢,主廚已經把就是我們所謂的剛剛在澳洲所展現的一個,就是所謂巴菲的部分呢,我們已經做一些微波跟加熱的部分,那這邊
。对，所以又看到因为油脂已经有被逼出来了，所以这边煮水特别的用一个水纸巾，能够把这样的一个油脂稍微做一些吸附。Yeah, so I'm seasoning the squid a little bit. 好，那我们刚花枝已经有加上了橄榄油，现在再加入少许的盐巴来做一些调味。And then this one I'm going to add to the pan, and I'm going to move it quite quickly because we want to make sure that it doesn't stick and it also separates as、okay. much as possible. 好，那我们就快速的把花枝呢能够倒入到我们的锅中，然后快速的去做一个半熟。那最重要是避免它会粘连在我们的锅子上面。You can see it's sort of like separate into the different noodles. Yeah, being seen now. Yeah. <laughs> so, chef, how about the the set menus, like some ingredients, or even how often you change your menu in a restaurant? Uh, so actually, at Canvas, we try to keep it a bit of fun, like、mm -hmm. quite fun. And we、uh, we change the menu every sort of two to two and a half months. Wow, that's quite often. Yeah, it's、uh, it, it's a good challenge for us.、Um, I think it keeps it interesting for us and for our diners.、Um, it allows us to have sort of regulars that come back and can try the dishes they like, but also like、um, really. Try something different more、yeah. often, you know. Make、yeah. it fun. I think、oh. it seldom happens in the restaurants. Yeah. Normally, I think it's the quarterly or even half a year. Yeah. So, and also like Taiwan seasons change quite quickly. So,、yeah. the local ingredients we do use here, like, do.、Uh, actually, I'm just going to take this out very quickly because、okay. we are done. No problem. Yeah. OK， 那我这边刚刚也特别问了主厨，说以前好好奇啊，就是在餐厅里面多久会换一次菜单？那有没有一些主要的一个食材是他会常用的？那目前他先快速先回答，因为我就没有让他再分心了，所以他就简单的说，基本上因为因应台湾的食，每两个月他会换一次的菜单。那也是因为他这个多年来哦，在台湾的经验，发现台湾的消费者是喜欢在餐饮的一个变化跟新鲜的刺激上面是比较多的一个频率比较高。所以他也因为这样的一个呃机会，能够在两个月去帮我们台湾的一个消费者来换一次菜单，对他来讲也算是蛮刺激，但是也可以去做一些能够激荡创意的部分。Okay. Let me just get this out of the way. Okay. Right. So I already talked to you, the、yeah. diners. Like、mm -hmm. you will change your menu two months once. Yeah. 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 So I think also、um, I think within our conversation, so you have some seafood basically in、yep. your ingredients、yep. menu. So what kind of seafood do you think is the most fresh in Taiwan? Or oh,、uh, things we really like to use here.、Uh, squid is、mm -hmm. really obviously very very nice.、Uh, a lot of the fish is great.、Uh, a lot of the also like、um, shellfish, like prawns and mussels、mm -hmm. and clams. Um, and and not only just do we try to use different seafood, but we also try to use as much of the seafood as、mm. possible.、Um, so all of our fish bones are used, all of our innards we start we're finding ways to use、mm. also.、Um, and if I don't use it at Canvas, I'll use it at my other casual restaurant. Okay. And also we'll find and vice versa. If there's some things we use there, we'll also.、Uh, We'll bring over to Canvas and try to find ways to use there, so we're not having too much wastage,、uh, especially in times like this. I think that's really important. Okay, 好，那这边主厨特别提到，就是刚刚提到，就是台湾其实是一个所谓以海鲜著名的一个。家跟小岛，那对我们来讲来，对我们来讲的话，它也用了蛮多的一个食材，包含我们的花枝啊，我们的呃贝蟹类啊，或是鱼类，其实都是非常好的一些选择。所以它其实同时，它也有另外一间小酒馆的餐厅，有机会自己去搜寻一下。那这两个餐厅里面去提供非常新的一个海鲜的食材跟料理。Yep, so we sort of, I've just for what we skipped, uh. I've put the custard in the base of the bowl. Okay, the best way I recommend is to use the、uh, takeout container and kind of just flip it into、mm -hmm. the bowl. Okay, then we're just arranging the squid on top.、Um, you basically just want to cover the custard. Okay,、mm -hmm. um, so good. Yeah, <laughs> thank you.、Um, so we're covering the custard with the squid, and then we just want to arrange the ingawa pieces around.、Um, you don't want to have it. All in one spot. You kind、mm. of just want to spread it out so that every time you get a mouthful, you get a piece of ingawa.、Mm. Right. So I think this is very similar to how 
Um, Peter Sheffy going all with bait also. He doesn't, he doesn't, you know, sort of swipe purees and things like that. He keeps it very concentrated and very um, sort of very central, mm -hmm. but he likes, I think the way that a lot of his dishes eat in terms of flavors and texture um, is actually kind of one of the key, I guess, our key ingredients key, yes. that we're looking at. Um, and everything sort of makes sense. There's nothing on the plate that's for, there for no reason, you know. Mm, okay. um, so in this case, we have squid for texture. We have ingawa for, and for flavor as well. We have the fattiness from the ingawa. We have the custard bit of richness, mm. um, as well as that ginger to help cut through all of that fat. Um, and, then, and then a very key ingredient too um, is Peter Gilmore's dishes are very, very pretty. Um, yeah, so we have some little edible flowers. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we have a, a few different little flowers here. I think uh, Chef Lewis has a few different ones to what I have, yeah. but it's really just using whatever you can. The main thing is that the flowers, uh, they're not just any flowers, mm. they're edible flowers. Yes. So don't just use something that you find at the park because <laughs> it's yeah, a dog peed on it or something yeah. like that you know what I mean so like yeah. um make sure it tastes good okay. and, and, and clean you know yeah, that's true. <laughs> especially if you're going to serve it to your family so <laughs> so really just sort of spreading it out keeping it nice and pretty okay and it doesn't yeah oh no I'm going to be a little bit of a little bit of 特别提到说，其实，在所有的一个餐盘的组合上面，它都是有一定的原因跟理由的。所以，就像说，他之前在就是澳洲 Key 的 Restaurant 里面，其实煮出的摆盘，除了就是漂亮干净去呈现以外，其实在每一口当中，都希望消费者是可以吃到像说有花枝啊，有一个综合综合的一个口感。所以，当我们在吃的时候呢，在品尝的时候，其实你要把卡士塔酱再搭配的，就是我们的花枝以及我们的比目鱼，然后完整的去做融合，在你的味蕾里面。一个非常美好的体验跟享受哦。Okay, so we decorate a little bit. Yeah, make it nice and pretty and colorful. Okay, cool. That's basically it. Okay. And then, oh, sauce. Yes. So. Uh, I think I wrote on the recipe, you can sort of put this in a, just like in a teapot. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to do this for like a friends or family, it's yeah. a great little way to serve it. Um, the reason we do it in the restaurant is so like soup isn't spilling everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, I don't have a teapot, but I have this little sort of sauce jug. Okay. Um, so again, I didn't bring it to the boil. It's just, it's really hot, but I don't want it boiling because otherwise that's going to affect the consomme and maybe make it too salty or... Um, we'll start to lose the, the color. Great. So yeah. carefully pour inside. Then we have our, yeah. And this. Okay, that's your that's audience. Our dish. Yeah. 好，那这边呢，主厨也特别的帮我们的高汤呢，再稍微的我加热、复热一下。那基本上提到就是不要让它滚煮，就是不要到一百度波、嗯，就是在那个。那高温烹煮的一个装，就稍微呢加热之后，就可以用一个小的糊状的一个盘呃的盛器，然后来做搭配，这样就是一个很美好的能够跟家人一起分享的一份料理了。Okay, Lennon, I think we finished from Taipei. Yeah, I think we are basically done over here as well. As you can see, Chef Lewis has plated his up very beautifully. And I think it's so interesting to see how like basically we have the same components, but just because our garnishes the herbs and the flowers look a bit different. It completely changes the, the way the dish looks. Uh, should we both do a pour over at the same time? <laughs> sure. sure. <laughs> Who's pouring? Do you want to pour oh, or I pour? You pour, you pour. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, do you Are you ready? <laughs> yeah, mate, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Wow. Not bad, Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think the dish looks stunning. It looks very light and, you know, I think it's really going to bring out the flavors of the seafood as well. Um, if any of the viewers at home have any questions for either of our two chefs, please type them in the group chat. If I'm not wrong, we actually have a question now. I'm going to read it out. So for both chefs, just curious, since both of you have been working as chefs for so long, what is your comfort food? Maybe you can start with Chef Lewis. What is my comfort food? 
Not this, right? Yeah. <laughs> Edible flowers. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> just good Chinese cuisine. Really? Yeah, wow. Okay, honestly. okay. Is that from being in Singapore for quite a bit or? Yeah, now I've experienced like what real Chinese cuisine is. Because okay. Chinese cuisine in the UK is like half a roast chicken and chips with gravy. Okay, okay. And do you, do you like the spicy flavor? Sounds like as Australia. Well? Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah, just okay. a nice mild spice for me is okay. uh, super tasty. Awesome. Yeah. Can't go wrong with Chinese. What about yourself, Chef Kai? Yeah, uh, comfort food. Yeah. What, what you normally eat when you're a day off? You feel Whoa. very comfortable and uh, yeah. It's oh, Din Tai Fung is great. I love Din Tai Fung. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Like, yeah. Wow. Okay. I mean, some, for for us, it's like it's very convenient. It's open all the time, and mm -hmm. it's it's solid. Like you know, Shalom Bao is is, is awesome. Like, yeah. <laughs> and okay. in here as well, we get the original, so that's kind of that's kind of yeah. nice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> wow. So dumplings will be dumplings, the comfort yeah. food for Shalom the chef guy. Shalom Bao. Okay. Questions that we have? Okay, so for both chefs, if you were deserted on an island and you can only ask for one ingredient to work with, what would you choose as your key ingredient? <laughs> we keep using that pun over and over today. <laughs> so maybe you start with Chef Lewis, what would be your one key ingredient be? Key ingredient would be Edible flowers again. The, 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 trust, the trusted egg. egg. I love eggs. Okay. And I think it's 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 like the the creator of so many things, right? From from various different recipes, but also a boiled egg, a scrambled egg, a and poached even, egg. Even the custard. That there you go. Today. That's egg. Yeah. So you can just egg. manipulate it. I would egg. forage on the island. I would pick some herbs. I would steam a beautiful custard. Of course. <laughs> Fine dining even when you're stuck <laughs> on an island. <laughs> what about your chef? Self okay. Chef. Uh, God, for me, I, I really love fruit. So I think honestly, just like a, a mango is like, mango. like mangoes here are, are so good. Yeah. Um, so I, just a really good mango is good for me. Yeah. <laughs> fruits, I think the answer would be fruits. Yeah, fruit, yeah. all fruits. Like it's yeah. like Taiwan has great fruits. That's why I think yeah. I love sort of picking through night markets and yeah. grabbing Taiwan's the kingdom and... of the fruits. Yeah, I yeah. think so. We Pineapple, so, mango. Yeah, a lot. Dude, so good. Custard apples, great. Yeah. Okay. So I think, yeah. Very yeah. interesting question. Mango. Mango is good. Yeah. <laughs> custard apple, not so good. <laughs> oh, custard apple is really good, actually. Yeah. yeah. And we have the, like a own species that's uh, yeah. pineapple custard apple. It's really good. All right. So I think uh, that's pretty much all the time we have today. I hope for all the viewers at home, you enjoyed the session learning from Chef Lewis and Chef Kai over in Taiwan. Uh, we were all very happy to have you. So I hope to see you all physically, hopefully next year for ICSA 2022, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. 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 <laughs>